In this video, we'll talk about the fact that how there are multiple parameterizations for the same curve and come into play to make things easier or to make these more complicated. So for any curve, there's a lot of different ways you could write a function C of t that traces out that curve. This is why you may hear the function C is referred to as, as a path and not just the curve because the path refers to exactly how you're tracing out the curve and not just the resulting line you draw on the page. If we look at a circle from before, you know this trace out the circle, radius three, centered at the point two, one. Now, what if I look at the following, two plus three cosine of two theta, and y is one plus three sine of two theta. Well, this traces out the exact same curve. It covers the same circle. However, it's gonna do it twice as fast because of the two theta here on the inside, it's gonna go around the circle twice as fast as it was before. So same curve, double speed. I can also look at x is two plus three cosine of minus theta, and y is one plus three sine of minus theta. Again, same curve, now I'm going the opposite direction. So instead of going counterclockwise, I'm going clockwise as I go around this curve. I can also shift the starting point. So two plus three cosine of theta minus pi over four, and then y is one plus three sine of theta minus pi over four. This is again the same curve, I'm just starting it somewhere else. So instead of starting at theta equals zero, I start at theta equals pi over four and spin that way. I'm doing the exact same thing, I just have a different computation for this curve. And in some cases it can be easier to use some of these than others when trying to figure out what's going on. In most cases the simplest one is the way you wanna go, but all of these will trace out the exact same curve for different ranges of theta, but they'll trace out the same circle in the end. This means that to be particular when you're talking about a curve that you specify how you're parameterizing it before you try to go beyond a simple picture of what it looks like. Right? If I want to talk about where is the curve at theta equals pi over two, all of these give me different values. All four of these have a different point at theta equals pi over two, but they all trace out the same curve. So the path there matters, not just the curve itself. So if you want to talk about certain values, you have to have a specific parameterization in mind before you get to that point. Look at the following example as well. We have the following three parameterizations. We want to know what they trace out and how they move along the curve. So if you look at all of these, right, C of one is t two t, C two is t squared two t squared, and C three is sine of t two sine of t. For all of these, we see that y equals two x, which means the points that I get for this curve are all going to be on the line y equals two x. We'll draw out three versions of that and see where that gets us. So if you look at C1 of t on here, how does this trace out the curve? Well, for every value of t, I'm at the x-coordinate t, and I get the value of 2t, which means if I let t vary wherever I want, say like minus two to two or something, I will trace out all the way from minus two down here up to two up here. And if I let t go further, I'll trace out the entire line. That's great. What about C2 of t? For C2, whenever I'm at a t value, I'm at the coordinate t squared. What this means is that t can only be positive. So if I again go from minus two to two, I'm starting out here at x coordinate four when t is two. I go in towards here. When I hit t equals zero, I hit the origin here, and then I come back out. So for this one, I am going in this way and then back out afterwards along the same line. It's still a part of the same graph, but it gives me a different curve and a different set based on what I'm using with the parameter here. And then for the last one, we have sine of t and two sine of t. And this one, you can think of the fact that sine is always between minus one and one, which means when I draw this curve out, if I start at zero, I'll start at the origin. I'll go up here to one, hit one, and then backtrack, and then hit minus one down here, and then backtrack. And I'll keep oscillating back and forth within this range the entire time, not getting beyond x equals one or x equals minus one, because my sine of t can't get beyond those points. So even though all three of these parameterizations will part, be part of the same graph, y equals 2x, they trace out different parts of the graph and they do it differently depending on these parameterizations. So it's important to keep that in mind when you're trying to sketch out a curve and see what's actually going on. So that's the point of this. Even if you can limit the parameter t and see what the graph should look like, that doesn't necessarily mean you get all of that in a nice smooth fashion when you try to solve out the problem because depending on how you parameterize the curve, you can get different of the graph, different ways of tracing it, different ways of getting all this set up just based on what your parameterization looks like. So it's important to make sure you have both the parameterization and the curve in mind when you're trying to solve these sorts of problems because they both can affect what kind of answer you're going to get.